In this brief tutorial, I will be telling you about the usage of data science in psychology. Data science is an interdisciplinary field which is used in many subjects and disciplines and can provide relevant information for a lot of users. Data science in psychology predicts the customer behaviors, user interface design, and user experience research. And that has created a lot of value for business users looking for valuable insights to create decision-making process easier. Some of the ways in which you can cluster different user groups is through dividing them into their big or five personality types. One of the first companies who actually use this information is IBM Watson personality test in which it identifies consumers based on big five differences in their personality. So the big five domains are openness, conscientiousness, extraversion, agreeableness, and narcissism. Along with their values and needs, this information is extremely valuable for decision makers. Once you have identified the consumers in their personality types and matched them with their online behavior, you have very vital information to target them with specific ads, relevant information, and warnings of any social importance in their geography. In addition to qualitative data like Big Five personality, you can also use neuroscience interfaces like eye tracking, EDA, facial expression, EEG, ECG, EMG, and respiration data to substantiate the information that you have from qualitative data. This information has been so useful that there are a lot of papers that have substantiated its existence. For example, computer-based personality judgments are more accurate than those made by humans was a vital paper written by Wu Yu Yu, Michelle Kosinski, and David Stilwell at Cornell in cooperation with Facebook. The paper talks about the accuracy of machine-based algorithms over human um, predictions when it comes to Facebook likes. So necessarily what it does is that algorithms predict human behavior online from their likes and their personality types. So one of the things that differentiates people are their own trust in different things. So demographics tell you about a person, where they live, their family size, their profession, their income, and their age. On the other hand, their interests tell you if they are sports fans, if they like occasions, if they're good with money, if they are into pets, or if they are a huge music fan. And this information can then be useful to make decisions. If you want to know more about how psychographics work in terms of return on investment, you can read a wonderful article by HubSpot, How to Use Psychographics in Your Marketing. In the second part of the tutorial, I will be using big five data that I've collected over the years to analyze in a Jupyter notebook and tell you what it actually means. Hi, so in this part of the tutorial, I will be using a Kaggle notebook to demonstrate how to analyze the big five personality test data. So the link for this Kaggle notebook will be available in the description below of this video. So in order to start analyzing data, you first need to understand what the data is. So the link where you can actually take the test and see the generated report will be included in the video description. For now, there are big five domains that you have to calculate the total score for. The big five domains are openness, conscientiousness, extraversion, agreeableness, and narcissism. This is a sample report which I have generated for and the test takers on the result page. So for each big facet, there are six further subdomains. For openness to experience, you have imagination, artistic interest, emotionality, adventureness, intellect, and liberalism. And that goes on for conscientiousness, extraversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. So if we have the scores for all of them that we're going to analyze, I have the data for the students that I have administered this test on, and the data set will be available within this Kaggle notebook. The tool that I will use to analyze this data is called PyCarrot, and there's already a video tutorial on PyCarrot on the Data Professor channel. If you don't have that, you first need to install that via pip install PyCarrot command, and when you have all the requirements satisfied, you can start importing the data. In this cell, you will import and read the data, and then what we're trying to do, for example, in this analysis, is that we're trying to predict the total extraversion score for the participant based on other variables in the data set. Once you will do this, it will give you a summary of the total rows in the data set, the missing values, the numeric and categorical feature, and other important information, like if there has been any imputation made and then what transformation methods were used, PCA, and a lot of other. 
if you want to understand in depth all these parameters i would suggest that you would go to pycart's regression tutorial on their website once you have gone through this step we'll make our model based on the data to find out which is the best model for extroversion and we'll compare top five models for that so once we've run the analysis we found out there are models that perform best for this data set and based on that we can see that bayesian ridge is probably the best model for this data set so once we create the model for the bayesian ridge and apply the manifold model creation experiment on that we have the mean scores and standard deviations you can also plot the model by running this cell and you can also plot the error for the data set and you can also find out the feature importance for predicting the total score of extra version here you can evaluate model and find out different parameters like hyperparameters residuals prediction error cook's distance feature selection learning curve and a lot of others if you want to optimize your model for a specific metric, you can optimize it using the AutoML Optimize cell. You can also do the pre-holdouts for your model to find out if there is a decrease in accuracy. Once you have done, you can finalize your model. And PyCard also gives you a wonderful way of automatically deploying your model directly to cloud services. In this example, if you run this command and you have the credentials, you can deploy it automatically on AWS. So this is how you analyze personality psychology data using PyCare. If there are any other questions, feel free to reach out to me and I'd be more than happy to help you. And I'd like to thank you for taking out the time and viewing the video. If that has been helpful, please do share the video. Thank you.